I have to wonder, though, um, we, we've been here before and we have seen some of these bailouts uh, actually get halted over failure to meet certain conditions. Are we likely to see the reforms coming out of Pakistan to stay in place? Yes, so it's good news that uh, they've reached a staff level of uh, agreement to release around $3 billion. But as you said, there's some real questions about um, the um, government's willingness and ability to meet the various conditions, including uh, reduction in subsidies and uh, increase in tax take. And uh, I, uh, the last time I heard, there's also questions about whether um, some of the other external lenders from the Gulf and, and China had yet signed up to this deal. Hmm. David, David here. S speaking of specific conditions, uh, do, does anything specific come to mind that they might sort of have trouble meeting given this specific $3 billion deal here? Just let's, let's look short term. Well, uh, previously uh, in the last uh, deal which expired, um, last week. Um, that included requirements for reduction in subsidies and increasing in tax take. And those yeah. conditions were explicitly uh, not fulfilled by the um, Pakistani uh, government in particular. They, they actually uh, effectively uh, reduced taxes for um, uh, wealthier people. So I think there's a long way uh, for the government to go um, uh, to fulfil these conditions, even if uh, assuming that the government um, remains sufficiently stable to be able to do that in coming months. David, I mean, you know, we're also talking about it was this is, I guess, part of uh, that negotiation for the six point seven billion dollar uh, package. This is a three billion one. Does it? Uh, of it, do, do we get more conversations about the rest of that money? And on top of that, what I mean, the biggest problem Pakistan has in terms of servicing this debt is actually tax take and uh, this paltry uh, amounts of money collected from the general populace. A general populace which at the same time is fleeing the country. It's all not boding well, is it? Yes, correct. And uh, in fact, um, the, the government released uh, recently announced a tax amnesty to um, allow wealthy um, Pakistanis to bring large amounts of money back into the country, no questions asked. So that is sort of, uh, in, in effect, a tax break for the wealthy. So um, the government's been um, really going in the wrong direction in, in all of this. And as I said, um, it's not clear whether um, other lenders, in particular China, um, is uh, willing to sign up to this. We've seen in other recent uh, IMF negotiations in um, Sri Lanka that uh, China really had to be dragged kicking and screaming to the uh, negotiation table and it took some months to actually get to any agreement with China. And it seems like you know, you've been tracking, of course, what we've been seeing and the issues that are miring the Pakistani government. We've seen riots. Uh, you know, the government, the military have responded forcefully. You talked about some of uh, Khan's political party have resigned as well. I mean, are, are you seeing any signs that political stability can return to Pakistan? Yes, well, so this is all part of a major uh, economic and political crisis. Um, in May, we saw um, major uh, uh, countrywide Wyatt's riots after the arrest of um, the former Prime Minister Imran Khan. And there were even questions about potentially potential splits within the army in terms of supporters of Imran Khan. That's led to a major crackdown by the army, both uh, internally and around the country. It's effectively uh, arrested or pushed out much of Imran Khan's political party's leadership. And that really puts in question about whether um, he can properly contest the coming elections in a few months' time, uh, whether that means um, uh, greater stability or not. Um, we don't really know, although certainly some external uh, observers um, believe that uh, greater involvement of the Pakistan military in uh, Pakistan politics will lead to greater uh, stability, even at the cost of democracy. 
Right. So that's, I guess, since you brought up elections, it's $3 billion now. It doesn't cover what the country will, will, will need next year. After the elections, does that increase the probability that we might see a, a new round of negotiations, a new team, uh, perhaps even a new deal with the IMF? Uh, perhaps, but really the biggest play here is China. And um, it's all, uh, the game here is all about China and to a lesser extent some of the Gulf Arab states in being willing not only to roll over existing indebtedness, um, but um, reschedule it in accordance with uh, IMF requirements. And that was really the problem that um, we saw in the Sri Lanka negotiations, that China was not willing to be treated uh, in the same way as other sovereign lenders. So uh, that's a big question. Obviously, um, Pakistan is, is really the biggest uh, recipient of Chinese lending under the um, BRI um, project. So it's a huge amount at stake for China. And it sets, whatever China does here, sets a massive precedent for all of the other countries that are borrowers um, that may be in trouble. Uh, not just China, you also mentioned the Middle East. I mean, there is a bit of donor fatigue going on with regard to those countries which have been traditionally the ones who come and bail uh, Pakistan out. Yeah. Uh, the implications further down the road seem as though it, the country's more than likely to default. What's the impact for the rest of this part of the world as a result? Well, look, I don't know whether ultimately uh, it will default and whether China and Arab lenders will um, finally come to the party. You're absolutely right in saying there's huge amount of lender fatigue here. They've seen it all before. They've seen multiple crises. They've seen multiple promises from the Pakistan government that haven't um, delivered. In particular, the US has, um, uh, it seems, um, entirely uninterested in supporting Pakistan through this crisis. There are a number of comments from US officials pointing that uh, China was really the major lender and China had to take respons responsibility here and that uh, Pakistan should not expect that multilateral lenders should come in and bail out, uh, bail out China.